Hello, calculus students. Let's show you how to do some of these test prep problems. As a reminder, please try these on your own first. Do not come watch this video first. You need to try to struggle a little bit with these, and then you'll come here and get some help. So this first one we have going on here, we're going to take the derivative of a natural logarithm and of an exponential expression here. The problem is there's two. So this has this piece of it and this piece of it. This is product rule because you have two different little expressions being multiplied together. So what you have to do then is take the use the product rule. I will help you out just to remind your reminder the derivative of this one is going to be 1 over 3x times 3. So that'll simplify to 1 over x. Then this one, the derivative of that is when you do exponential, remember it's just itself. So 5 raised to the 2x. Now times the derivative of the inside, so times by 2. And then we have to times that by, since it wasn't an e base, it wasn't uh, the, the natural number e, we have to then say natural log of 5. OK, so this is your u. This is the v in product rule. Derivative of the first times second one left alone, blah, blah, blah. Do that with the product rule, and you should be able to simplify things out and get one of those answers. For number two, the trick part, tricky part here is looking at when the particle is at rest. This statement right there means that we're looking for when does the velocity equal zero. So that's what we have to figure out first. Then when we have that, we're going to say it asks, the, or it says the acceleration of the particle is blah. So well, these answers here should be the answer of acceleration at the time when the particle is at rest. Let me help you out with this one because it is a little bit tricky. Kids have had a lot of, a lot of hard times with this one. Um, first, let's take the derivative. So we get the derivative of position is velocity. So then this is going to be e raised to the 2t times 2, and then minus e raised to the t. All right, so there's our velocity. Acceleration, because we're going to need that one as well, is going to equal, so now this is e raised to the 2t times 2 times another 2, so it's going to be times 4 minus e to the t. All right, there's acceleration. So again, it wants us to know when is velocity going to equal 0. So I'm going to take this equation right here. I'm going to write it down here. Uh, 2e to the 2t minus e to the t equals 0. Once we can solve this, we then take our answer and plug it in to the acceleration problem, acceleration uh, equation, I should say. So there's several things with this problem that, uh, that can trick us up as we're moving. First of all, trying to solve this, most kids might add an e to the t over the other side, but that doesn't really work. What we want is to factor it. Factor out an e to the t. OK, so now what's going to be left here? 2 e to the t minus 1. If I factor around an e raised to the t from each of these factors and pull it out to the front, this is now 2 e to the t. This one is just 1. OK, so now that you can solve that one, uh, you should be able to notice that when you get this, let's just rewrite this, e to the t has to equal 0, or 2 e to the t minus 1 has to equal 0. When you solve this, uh, this is not possible. This will never equal 0. This one, on the other hand, you're going to have to use the natural log. So your answer is going to be t equals the natural log of something. OK, so then go from there, and then you're going to have to use some logarithm properties to be able to solve the rest of this. But that's how you set this up. For number three, this takes some calculator work. I tried to give you that hint here that you're going to want to use a calculator. Uh, what is the slope of the curve at its first positive x-intercept. The only way we're going to be able to do that is to plug this into a calculator to figure out when is that very first x-intercept, positive x-intercept. So let's pull that up on the calculator. OK, here I've entered it in the calculator. And I'm going to just double check real quick what's my mode in. It is in radians. Good, because for calculus, we want it to be in radians. Uh, now, I'm going to adjust my window right now because I only really need to see its first positive. So I'm just going to go from 0 to 5, see what that looks like. My min and max, I don't even know yet. Let's just go ahead and graph it and see what I get. Um, OK, as long as I can see it, then you're good. So where I'm looking for this spot right here, what is that intersect? 
So second calculate, not an intersection. I want a 0, 2. Number 2 will give me the 0. And my left boundary, I could just say, uh, I could scroll over here to the left. Or you could manually enter, and that speeds this up a little bit. If I just manually enter 0, 0.1, enter. And then it'll set my first boundary. And then this is 1. Uh, one, yeah, 1 will give it to me if I just say 1 as my right boundary. Hit Enter. So now it's going to search in between there for my 0. And my 0 is, if it will find it, there it is, 0 0.682751. Now it keeps going on and on and on. So I'm going to let my calculator store this. So if I quit out of this, second quit, <coughs> now i got a bunch of stuff here, but that doesn't matter. I can clear it out if I want. But now I can go ahead and automatically come down here to the store button. If I hit store, it's going to take my answer. And I'm just going to store it as the, the x variable, x. I mean, I could have, well, here, let's not confuse you. I'm going to store it as A so that I don't throw you off. Ah! Okay, let's try that again. I need to store, and then I'm going to do alpha A. Okay, so that's going to take the intercept that I just found as an answer, <clears throat> excuse me, and store it as A. 0.68275, and you can see here I see more decimals because the calculator is remembering all the decimals forever and ever. So now, if we look back at our problem, it said, what is the slope? When it says, what's the slope, that's actually saying finding the derivative at this point. So I could manually write out the derivative and then plug this crazy number in, or I can just let the calculator do it for me. I've already plugged the, the equation into y equals. So here's the nice thing. I can do, here's a quick little calculator speed exercise. We can say math, and then option 8 will do the derivative. I'm going to do it with respect to x. And then my equation, I've already stored in my y variables. So I'm going to do the variables button over here to the y variables. And then the function number 1, it's, I stored it in the y1, so I can just go ahead and hit Enter. And now it's going to take whatever I entered into y1, and I want to evaluate the derivative at the point when x equals, and remember how I stored it up here? I stored it as a. So alpha and then a, and Enter. And there is our answer, 1.704 rounded 1.075. All right. So I pretty much gave that one a hold to you, but you had to see the calculator work, how to do that one. The key to number four is this part right here is parallel tangents. In order to have tangents that are parallel, that is saying the same thing as the slope of the tangents are equivalent. Well, if the slopes of a tangent are, remember what a slope of a tangent is? That's just the derivative. So that's saying that the derivative of these two things, that f prime has to equal g prime. That's what we're trying to figure out. So if we take the derivative of f prime, that's going to be uh, 2e raised to 3x times 3 with the chain rule, then that has to equal 15x squared. So in order to figure out when these two things equal each other, you can just graph them. Graph this one on in y1, graph this one in y2, and plug those into a calculator. And once you've done that, you can just see where their intersection is. Wherever they cross, that'll be your answer, because that's the x value when they have the same parallel tangent. Last one here. This might throw you off with this weird notation. This is just finding the second derivative. So just as a reminder of that, d, d squared y over dx squared, that's just second derivative. So that's all you have to do here. Uh, I'll get you started. I'm not going to do the whole thing because this one's fairly simple. But uh, derivative of cosine, remember, is negative sine. So I'm going to have a negative 3 sine of x over 3. And then times the derivative of the inside here would be a 1 third. So then you can simplify this up. The third, the 1 third and the 3 will cancel each other. So you have negative sine of x over 3. And then you take the derivative one more time, and you'll have your answer. All right, that's all of the test prep questions. So good luck on that mastery check.